Hello and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about everything that I bring with me to the hospital. I was just going to do a what's in my bag medical school edition, but after thinking about it, actually some of the most important stuff that I have I carry on my person. So we're going to start with an overview of what I wear and what I take in my pockets, and then we'll move on to what I take in my bag. I'm still relatively new to YouTube, so if you've just come across my videos and you're new to my channel, please subscribe down below. I would love to have you on board. And without further ado, let's get into it. To start with, probably one of the most important things I carry with me is my stethoscope. Now I have a Littmann Classic 4, I think, also with my name engraved, so when I lose it, it can be returned back to me because let's be real, that's a pretty regular occurrence. This is thankfully only my second stethoscope in all of med school, which I'm actually very surprised by. I love the Littmann brand. I've actually taken the cap off the bell just to reduce artifact when I'm auscultating, and they come with these extra little rubber rings which just slip right on top. So yeah, that's the first thing, the stethoscope, black and gold, just classy. Moving on to my top pocket. In my top pocket I actually carry two pens and there's reason why one of them is quite a nice pen and one of them is just a kilometrico and that is because quite often the consultants or registrars will ask to borrow your pen and as the medical student you're expected to just be a reservoir of pens but they don't always give them back. I always have one cheap pen on hand just in case someone asks to borrow it. It's not as big of a loss when I never see it again. Also in my top pocket, I keep my glasses. I usually wear them most of the time when I'm in the hospital, but with the mandatory masks at the moment, unless I'm actually reading something, I'll just keep them in my top pocket because they always fog up. If anyone has any tips on how to stop your glasses from fogging up, please leave a comment below because no matter what I do, they always fog up quite an anticlimactic story but it's the truth. Moving on, down to my pants pockets. Haven't really thought this through very well so just bear with me. So down on my pants I have two top pockets and one cargo pocket down on my thigh. Oh and I've actually got pockets on my butt too. The first thing and the most obvious thing down on my pants is my hospital ID. So I have on the front my swipe card to access the hospital. On the back of that I have the emergency calling criteria, I have a library card, and I have this Glasgow Coma Scale cheat sheet and the paramedic handover protocols, which I was actually given by a paramedic and it's really handy. Also, because I'm on psych this rotation, I have the keys into the psych ward and I keep all of it on a retractable lanyard. The reason being is when you're having to swipe to go through every door, it's just super convenient. I really wouldn't recommend putting your hospital ID onto a lanyard. First of all, it's a hygiene risk. If you're leaning over patients, it could be transferring germs between a lot of different people. Secondly, if you're on something like the psych ward, they do advise against any lanyards or long straps on handbags in case someone becomes quite aggressive it can be used to strangle you. Seems extreme but it is something that you have to consider if you're going to be working in this environment. Also down on my waistband just underneath my ID I keep a little nurse's fob watch. The reason being when you're doing a cardio exam and have to count someone's heart rate it's very convenient to have a little watch with a second hand because not every clock in the hospital does and you can't exactly pull out your phone. Speaking of which in my top left pocket I always keep my phone. I don't think there's really much need to explain anything about that and down in my thigh pocket I just keep a little notepad so if ever I have to jot down any medications I have somewhere safe to write it down that I know I won't lose I've actually bought these ones in a pack of five from the supermarket and it cost literally $1.50 so would highly recommend getting a little notepad so in terms of everything I keep in my pockets that's it moving on now to what I keep in my bag before we delve inside, I actually want to talk about the bag itself. So I have two different go-tos. If I'm based at the hospital, where generally the hours are a little bit longer, but I know I have a locker, I'll bring my backpack. If I'm on GP placement or out in the community otherwise, I will generally take a tote bag. But as I've mentioned earlier, I'm currently on psych rotation at the hospital. So today we will be going through my backpack. Okay, first things first, in the main pocket, I keep my laptop. I've just got a rose gold MacBook Air. It's about five years old, but it still works like a charm. And regardless of where I go or what I'm doing, my laptop will 
always be with me. That way I can work on any assignments, do any research, catch up on any PBLs in any free time that I have, or if I'm at the library, I don't have to worry about logging onto their computers, which are really slow. This laptop is so important to me passing med school. And because all of the information on here is so highly treasured, in my main pocket, I also keep a hard drive where I back everything up. So I've got my hard drive and I've also got my Apple adapter. And along that same path, I always take my charger as well. Also in the laptop compartment at the moment, I have a stack of papers. These are just random things that this rotation have given as handouts. So we've got an involuntary mental health admission form, clozapine titration chart, a form one, which is another piece of paperwork needed to hold someone on a psychiatric hold against their will. And and a bunch more things like that. I don't always have a stack of random papers in my bag, but for this rotation, it's necessary. Again, in the laptop compartment, I just have my weekly diary. I never used to be a big paper diary person, but this year, for some reason, I just knew that it would be necessary and boy oh boy was I right. There are so many assignment due dates and different clinics and things that I need to remember that this truly dictates my life this year. The last thing in the laptop compartment is just a little notebook and it's where I write all of my to-do lists. I didn't get through everything on that one but I mean close enough right? On top of the larger section of the main compartment I just keep my purse. I find that having a really small purse with a long strap just works a lot better for me than a regular wallet if ever I'm ducking to the grocery store before or after the hospital. It's so much easier just to quickly sling it across my shoulder. I also just pop it across my body on surgical or medical ward rounds because they'll either go for hours and I'll need to buy lunch at some point or we'll have a coffee break halfway through and I just like to have my card on me. Like I said before though, in the psych ward I can't bring it with me because it's a potential weapon and on ED or GP placements you don't normally need it. Next thing I keep in the main compartment is my lunchbox. I always try and pack my lunch and bring it with me because it just saves so much money and it's really not that much effort to cook an extra serving at dinner to have for lunch the next day. So yeah, for lunch I'll usually have leftovers, fruit, yogurt, just that kind of thing. Of course in the main compartment I also have my water bottle, I don't go anywhere without it. I usually prefer reusable water bottles that have the screw on caps just because I don't like the thought of this being open in a ward in the hospital and then me drinking from it but this was all I had today and the last thing I keep in the main compartment is just my keep cup moving on now to this pocket the main thing I keep in here is my stethoscope case I never used to have one of these until I lost my last stethoscope because I would always put it in a different place so every afternoon it goes in there also in here I just have another pen because you can never have too many pens apparently and a pen torch I don't use it all that often, but if you're on Neuro, it's very helpful. Also in this pocket, I just keep a few spare surgical masks, some hand sanitizer. All of these things are pretty stock standard in our COVID times. I keep some deodorant, some chewing gum. I find after lunch, when you have to put a mask back on, the spearmint smell is much more pleasant. And then in my very front pocket down the bottom, I keep my car keys. I also keep my earphones. These are just little Sony earbuds. I've only had them for a couple of months, but they're working really, really well. A whole bunch of hair ties, apparently, which are absolutely essential because you have to have your hair tied back in the hospital. Little side note for people with long hair, I find that a low ponytail is the best way to go. If I wear a high ponytail, when I bend forward, it'll come across. If I wear a bun, I always end up with a headache. So either a low ponytail or a braid, I would say are the ways to go. So that's everything that I regularly keep in my bag, but there are a few differences when I'm on different rotations. For example, when I'm on a surgical rotation, I'll also just bring a really cheap cloth tote bag. This is to keep my shoes and my scrubs in when I'm in the theatres because there isn't always lockers available. Within that bag, I will also generally bring some long socks, some leggings and a singlet just to wear underneath the theatre scrubs because it gets pretty cold and I also find that if you have like long compression socks, you don't get as lightheaded as often. Other exceptions would be in preclinical years, if you've got anatomy labs, I would always bring a lab coat in a plastic bag because ill you don't want formaldehyde and cadaver germs through your bag and whiteboard markers I would have with me wherever I went in preclinical years because I found I was always in a tutorial room drawing up a mechanism for some pathology and 
whiteboard markers were really helpful. That brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel below and follow me on Instagram. As for now, have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you next time.